Okay, our goal in this example is to find the first eight coefficients, a0 through a7, of a series solution for this following differential equation. So we have this polynomial 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared, that's the coefficient of y double prime. We have 1 plus 4x, that's the coefficient of y prime, and then we have 3y, which is the coefficient of, uh, sorry, we have 3, which is the coefficient of y, and so this is a homogeneous uh, differential equation, so we have this is equal to zero. And we're subject to the following initial conditions. And I want to point out that knowing these initial conditions tell us the following. That tells us that A0 equals 1 and A1 equals 2. Um, because obviously if you plug 0 into this, everything collapses except for the 0th term. And similarly, if you take the derivative and plug 0 in, everything collapses except for the first term. Another thing I want to notice is that we're guaranteed for the solution to converge um, at a distance from the origin to the roots of this polynomial. The origin because we're centered at the origin and the roots of this polynomial by a theorem that we stated in an earlier video. So let's look at the roots of this polynomial. We have 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared equals 0. And so I won't solve this, but you can solve this with the quadratic formula. And what you'll end up with is x equals 1 third and then minus 1 plus minus root 2. Good. So these are obviously complex numbers, but uh, you can think of it like this. So if this is the complex plane, then notice we have a negative real part and then a positive and negative imaginary part. So these uh, are somewhere over here in the second and third quadrant. And what we want to think about is completing a circle um, centered at the origin containing these two points and where that circle um, hits the x-axis that'll give you your uh, radius of convergence otherwise you can just find uh, the modulus of this x and I'll leave it to you but uh, what you get is the following you get 1 over root 3 so that tells us that we are guaranteed for the convergence of this uh, power series solution on an interval centered at zero with radius one over root three. In other words, the open interval minus third, minus one over root three to plus one over root three. Okay, so now that we have all of that taken care of, let's get started with the solution. So we'll set y equal to um, the sum n equals zero to infinity of a n x to the n. And now we'll uh, calculate the derivatives. So y prime equals the sum n equals 1 to infinity of n times a n x to the n minus 1. We no longer need the zeroth term. And then also y double prime equals the sum n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 a n x to the n minus 2. Okay, great. Now we have the zeroth, first, and second derivative, and we can plug this into the differential equation. So as we plug in this into the differential equation, we'll have quite a bit of simplification to do, but really it's just like a bookkeeping exercise. So let's see. The differential equation, so I'll just write that as DE, so that's going to become the following. So we'll have 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared times y double prime, but now that's the sum n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 a n x to the n minus 2. Okay, so that's the first bit. And then we have 1 plus 4x times y prime, so that'll give us 1 plus 4x times y prime, which is given by this. So that's going to give us the sum n equals 1 to infinity of n a n x to the n minus 1. Okay, good. And then finally, we have plus y times 3. So this will be plus 3 times y, which is the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n. And all of this is equal to 0. Okay, good. So the next thing I want to do is break this up into three pieces, and those pieces are going to be determined by um, how these polynomials, 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared, and 1 plus 4x, distribute onto the second and first derivative. So in other words, I'm going to be distributing this here, and distributing this here, and then collecting everything carefully. 
Okay, so maybe first notice that if we take um, this term and distribute it, we'll, we will get the following. So we're going to get uh, the sum n equals 2 to infinity of, so we'll have 3 um, times n times n minus 1 times a to the n x to the n. Great, so that's what we get from that. And then next, if we take this and distribute it, we're going to get plus the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 4 n a n x to the n, again, from distributing the x through to the x to the n minus 1. And then finally, we have this guy right here, which will be plus the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 3 a n x to the n, and that is from distributing this through. Okay, good. So notice all of these are given by distributing those orange underlined terms through. Okay, so next we'll take this 2x and distribute it through. <clears throat> so if we take this 2x and distribute it through the first term, we're going to get the following. So that's going to be plus the sum n equals 2 to infinity of 2n, n minus 1, a to the n, x to the n minus 1. Good. And then next we have, from distributing this 1 through, that'll be plus the sum n equals 1 to infinity of n a n x to the n minus 1. Okay, fantastic. And then the last thing we have is this constant number 1, which is multiplying the second derivative. So that's going to give us plus the sum n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 times a n x to the n minus 2. And now we know all of this is equal to 0. So here we have this line is given by those red underlines distributing through. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll pick up with this step and do some simplification. Okay, so I've combined all the like terms in the last step. So recall I had these three lines which each contained a few sums, but they were all indexed in a way so that we could combine everything with this a to the n x to the n term, this a sub n x to the n minus 1 term, and then so on and so forth. And now what we want to do is combine everything in here. That'll be the first thing that we want to do, and then re-index everything up to a coefficient of x to the n. So notice that we can rewrite everything in here as follows. So here we get this is 3n squared minus 3n and then we have plus 4n plus 3. Good, so notice that this thing is 3n squared plus n plus 3. So that's that. Good. And then also notice that this is uh, 2n squared minus 2n plus n, good, um, which that is equal to 2n squared minus n, which is n times 2n minus 1. Okay, good. Um, and now the next thing we need to do is re-index all of these things. So we'll do that as follows. So in this case, everything is okay because we're all in terms of x to the n, but we need to re-index this one down so that we have this is x to the n plus 1, sorry, x to the n. So what we'll do, what we'll do is everywhere we'll, we'll replace n with n plus 1 in this term. Good. And the same thing, we need to index this up to n plus 2. So here, we're going to replace n with n plus 2. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So this first term, I don't need to do anything. I'll just rewrite um, this term as 3n squared plus n plus 3. So that's going to give me the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 3n squared plus n plus 3 times a n times x to the n. 
Good. And now we're going to have the sum n equals 0 to infinity. And notice, if I index n up to n plus 1, that drops this thing down from starting at 1 to starting at 0. Um, and now we'll have n plus 1 because here we replace n with n plus 1, and then if we replace n with n plus 1 here, we get 2n plus 1. Good, and now we have a sub n plus 1, x to the n. Okay, that looks good. And then now finally here, we're going to replace everywhere we see n with n plus 2, so that moves our starting point down from 2 to 0, and now we have n plus 2, times n plus 1 times a sub n plus 2 x to the n and now this whole thing is equal to 0. Okay, good. Now we have everything indexed the same way in terms of this x to the n, which means we can combine all of these sums into 1. So we get the sum n equals 0 to infinity of, so we have 3n squared plus n plus 3, and that's multiplied by a n, and then we have plus n plus 1, 2n plus 1, um, a n plus 1, plus n plus 2, n plus 1, a n plus 2, and this entire thing is being multiplied by x to the n, and we get 0. And again, a power series is identically zero when all of its coefficients are identically zero. So that means we can set everything in here equal to zero. And that will give us a recursion on the coefficients. So let's see what we get. That tells us that we can write a n plus 2 in terms of a n plus 1 and a n. In other wo words, we can write n plus 2 times n plus 1, a n plus 2 equals negative. Now we'll have n plus 1, 2n plus 1, an plus 1, plus this polynomial 3n squared plus n plus 3, an. So that's the start of our recursion. So I'll um, erase the board and then we will finish this one off. Okay, so I've solved the recursion that we had in the last step for a n plus 2, and we get minus 1 over n plus 2 times n plus 1, and then times the quantity n plus 1, 2 n plus 1, a n plus 1, and then plus 3 n squared plus n plus 3 a n. And now recall that by our initial conditions, we know that a 0 is 1 and a 1 is 2. So again, that's by our initial conditions. So now all we have to do is plug in values of n um, that, we, that we want to find the coefficients of. So for example, if we want to find a sub 2, notice that's a sub 0 plus 2. In other words, n is equal to 0. And so that's going to give us minus 1 over 2. And then let's see what we get here. We get 1 times 1, a1. So we get a1 plus, and then if n is equal to 0, we get 3a0. Great. And then uh, you can simplify this, and you can see that um, this is uh, very clearly minus 5 halves. So this is going to be minus 5 over 2. Okay, good. And then you can continue this with a2, sorry, with a3. So a3 is a1 plus 2. And then again, put that in the recursion and you can calculate what the coefficients are. So I have the first eight coefficients worked out and I'll just write those down. So, and I'll write those down in terms of a Taylor polynomial which approximates this uh, solution. So we have 1 plus 2x minus 5 halves x squared. And then the next one is plus 1 over 6x cubed. Good. And then the next one is plus 10 over 3x to the fourth. And then the next one is minus 593 over 120x to the fifth. And then the next one is plus... 957 over 
x to the sixth. And then finally, since I promised that we'd go all the way out to a sub seven, which will be the x to the seven term, we have two, four, we have two, four, three, two over 315 x to the 7. So there we have, that is the Taylor approximation of this series up to the seventh term.